looking forward. I got, I got, I got to get one. Right. I got to apologize that I came late, first of all, because uh, Rabbi Smith, Bar Hashem, made a wedding, and I couldn't make it to the wedding because the we Bar Hashem were in Las Vegas, not for, not for. Huh? Not for uh, we have a, we Baruch Hashem had a granddaughter, so Rabbi Smith called me in the beginning of the week. He said, oh, "Please come to Shavar Brachos. That's in that's in uh, Muncie. That's where I live." I said, "Okay." I said, "We got a problem. I have to be here eight. I knew that uh, Mark is very tense with the eight o'clock, eight fifteen. So he said, <laughs> he said, "Okay, the Shavar Brachos starts seven o'clock." I figure uh-huh. 7 o'clock, I'll be there from 7 to 7.30. It happens to be the chassan I know very well also. The chassan just got smicha from us, so I figured I'll, I'll... Well, I came there. Guess what? When we knocked in the door at 7 o'clock, we were the first ones. <laughs> and when I left, the chassan and Kala just arrived. So, so I apologize. And um, Rabbi Besser might have heard this word. There's a point in word. At the end of the Mesach de Brachas, the Mishnah says, the boyes ubeis dina was mesakein sheyei shayl and shleim chaveri b'shem. And even though using Hashem's name in vain and shalom is one of the Eved's name is a problem, yet boyes felt that we have to integrate more of Hashem in your life, and he said, say shalom aleichem. Even though Hashem, and he brought a pasuk. The pasuk the Mishnah says in, in Brachas is. Which means to say, sometimes you've got to do something for the Eivishter that seems to be contradictory, seems to be different than what the Torah says. You know, the Torah says not to use Hashem's name in vain, but if that's what the time demands, you've got to do it. Well, I once read a Pailah Shittayim. Eis Lasis Lashem. There's still time. There's nothing to rush. Don't rush. That's Heferus Eresecha. That if a person has that attitude, that uh, you got to be on time. Us Lubavitches, we're always on time. Uh-huh. That's the biggest joke, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Here we are. There we are. No, I knew you were tense. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I, I, I left, I left, uh, I, uh, when Mark called me this week, I said, okay, you tell me, this person's coming, this person's coming, you know. And he, I said, uh, how about Yisrael, uh, Yisrael uh, Turk? Yisrael Turk worked for me. So he said, yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know, he's a big shot now. So I said, send him a message. Guess who called me today? Mr. Old Turk called me today to apologize that he won't be here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, all right, that's the, that's the Arum. That's, let's start with something serious. Yutas Kislev is a very serious day. Serious in the sense that I was actually surprised this morning. I got in, in a non Lubavitch shul in Muncie. Don't give me those eyeballs. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not, I do that every day. But I was surprised that nobody even stopped to say, maybe we shouldn't say Tachman. It was a regular day. Today was a regular Tuesday in the Shul I got him. And I don't know, when I grew up in my yeshiva, when we grew up, your Tiskisla, you were able to feel it in the air. They used to import the elderly Hasidim I mean, I actually grew up with the Rebbe, but I remember even the yeshiva's little kids, it was a special day, and I was very happy to hear that my little grandkids were told to wear Shabbos clothing today, and, and all, it was a different atmosphere. You know why? Chitzonius externalism has an effect on Pneumius. You know, when you have, when you make, it does, and Chassidus always says, that even though a, a, a garment doesn't really show the panemius of the person, right? But if you open up somebody's wardrobe and you see what's hanging, you can see a couple of things about him. Nobody's going to open my wardrobe and think I'm skinny. Because you, you'll see a big kapata. You'll see a, a big white shirt. But you'll also see a black hat. You'll know a little about me. So it does have the chitanius has an effect on the panemius. It could, it could show a little about the Pneumius. So even though this seems to be external, but we know that from Hilchah Shabbos also, the Dine Shulchan that you have to have the Garden Noim, it has an effect. So what, what, what was it all about? 
I can't give the same speech I gave this morning, so I have to make up a different one for this afternoon. Was anybody here? No, it was not there, but today's days, with, it's on YouTube already, and I, I'm sure Mayor heard it already, so I can't, he did, he said, see? So I have to come up with a different one. Hashgach practice. he decided to make a seum, first of all, Mazel Tov. Good for you, good for you. And actually, it's not only good for you, good for everybody that learned the Masechta. Um, he made him a, a seum in Masechta Shabbos. I'll talk a little about <coughs> a Gemara in Masechta Shabbos and see how we can relate this to Yutis Kisla. You're not running away, are you? You know, on Yutis Kisla, the Misprobably is very proper to bring a word from the Vilna Garn. But I will. The Vilna Garn says that the word seum is very interesting. Seum means a completion, but the word seum has four letters. Samach, Yud, Vav, and Mem, final Mem. If you take those four, four, four letters, separate them, you find something very special. The, the Samach, the letter Samach, and if you spell out the letter Samach, is Samach, Mem Chav. That's Samach. Yud is Yud Vav Dalit. Yud. Uh, vav Vav Vav. Is, that's how you write it. Vav. Mem is Mem Mem. What's unique about that? What's unique, says the Vilna Goyen, is the first letter, the Samach, is 60. How you spell it out is also 60. Samach is 60. Mem Chav is 60. Yud, the little Yud is 10. If you would continue writing out the Yud, it's Vav Dalid, is also 10. Vav, you just double it over. Vav, Vav. Six, six. And the Mem is Mem, Mem. So the point <laughs> of the Seum is not only to be the outside, the external, but the external and what's inside have to be together. What's hidden and what's revealed has to be together. That's what that's what seum is. It's not like another. All right, you know, I tell all the people that learn smicha or dayanis by me, whatever. I say, you ain't the certificate. You're not getting just a boom. Okay, I got my certificate, and it's another one. Of, I'm sure in the doctor's office you'll find 19 different uh, diplomas. It's not a, it's not a diploma. You put a nail on the wall, a nail on the coffin, and that's what it is. No, no, no. You have the chitzonius, the external. And the panemius and the internal have to be together. The number three is a very potent number on the night of on, on Yutis Kislev. In many, many ways. And I was thinking about this. I came up with so many, so many things that three has to do with Yutis Kislev. Some of them the Rebbe spoke about, but the theme the Rebbe says connects all of them together. Number one. Tonight, we're making a seum on three things. Mark, what are they? We're making a seum on Shas. We made a seum on the Tanya. And we made a seum on the Ayoyim Yoyim. <coughs> That's not, where there's three different Svarim that the cycle starts again. Now, if you want to be, if you want to be, uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? It's the one you want to, uh, uh, intellectual? Maybe you'll, or you want to have a little chutzpah, you might say each one of these symbolizes one of the three. Taira, Veda, Sudden. You know, the Mishnah says, Al Shleishet Varim Ma'elam Oimed. And then the Mishnah, end of the parak, it says, Al Shleishet Varim Ma'elam Kayim. But it's Taira, Veda, Gemilis Chasadim. And number three, we're making three Siyumim today. When the Altarevic was freed from prison, and actually, this morning, in the talk I gave this morning, I, I, what bothered me in that conversation I had, why is it that these Russian Bulvanis, you know what a Bulvan is, yeah? But these Russian Bulvanis, their neighbor, who was cheating, stealing, and killing, didn't bother them. The Altareva, that spread Yiddishkeit, bothered them. How is it that it's, it sounds to be very corrupt and, and doesn't even make sense for a guy? That the guy who he, who he parties with, he drinks and, 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 and steals and kills, still, but if, if the, the enemy is the one who spreads Yiddishkeit, so there must be 
that this hits them in the kishkis, hits them in the core. It doesn't let them, it doesn't let them exist so much that they have to take the Alter Rebbe to prison. But when the Alter Rebbe came out of prison, the, one of the first things he did is he wrote a letter to some of his chaverim, other students of the <coughs> other students of the, of the Mizritcha Magid. And we know that he, he wrote at, less, at least to Rav Baruch Mimezhebush and to Rav Levi Yitzchok Mibadidzhe. When he wrote that letter to, letter to them, he describes the day of Yutis Kislev and what happened to him. And he says three points of the specialty of the day. Again, the number three. The three points that he mentions is... It was, I was freed on Yutes Kislev, which was the day of our holy Rebbe's yard site. The Rebbe was the Mizritcha Magid. And the Mizritcha Magid's yard site is what was a special day, and he, he, he was released from prison. Number two, he says, I was released on Tuesday, the third day of the week. Shlishi Shehuchbal Boy Kitoiv. It's the day that my Sibereshis. Most, a lot of the days it says, Vayar Alikim Kitoiv. Some, one, Monday, for example, it doesn't say Kitoiv. But on Tuesday, it says Kitoiv twice. So it's a Yoim Shalishi Shahuch Boboi Kitoiv. The Kitoiv that it's good was doubled. And then he stresses the third point that I was, I was released, I was called out of the cell, just as I was saying to him. And I was up to the chapter in Tehillim that you have on your, on, on, by your table. And I was reading the Psukim, part of Shalom Nafshi. Right? Where Dovon HaMelech speaks about Hashem redeeming, saving him from all his troubles. As I was saying that Pasuk, I got the, the news that I'm being released. Those are the three points that he, he stresses. Incidentally, amongst, you know, they say the joke, of uh, the person that was becoming closer to Chabad Chassidus, and he was a youngster, was a bacher, and uh, okay, the parents might might have not been too happy, you know, they weren't that religious. After being in yeshiva for a couple months, the kid comes home very, very late. So the parent says, what's this? He says, it's Tess Kislev. What's Tess Kislev? The Yud Kislev, the Mittler Rebbe was taken to prison, and he was released. All right. Okay. Celebrate. Two weeks later, nine days later, actually, the kid comes home again late. The bacher or the teenager comes again late. What's this? It's your test kiss, Luke. The Al Rebbe was taken to prison, and he was freed. Fine. It's a good time to celebrate. A couple of months later, the same bacher or the same teenager, youth based, uh, uh, comes home late again. So the parents ask him, What's this? He says that you obeyed Thomas. The three the Rebbe was taken to prison and he was released. So the mother, being a simple woman, turns to the kid and says, Can't you find yourself some better friends? <laughs> <laughs> the point is that amongst, amongst Hasidim, they say that it's interesting that all three Rabbeim, when they were released from prison, have a connection to part of the Shalom Nafshim. And Yud Kislev, if I'm not mistaken, it is the Tilim of the day, <coughs> is it in the Yom Yud. And Yud Tes Kislev is, it's actually a Pasuk Yud Tes in that, in, in that thing. And it's also divided the day of the week and one of the day of the month. And each one of them has to do directly to the part of the Shalom Nafshi. So the Alter Rebbe stressed his Chaverim, the great Tzadikim, he says, there is uh, the three points. It's Yudas Kislev, the day of our Rebbe's Yardside. It's Tuesday, Yom Shlishi Shavuch Boboi Ketoiv. And it is when I was saying, Pada B'Shalom Nashi. Now the Gemara says, Brachas, the Gemara says, Pada B'Shalom Nashi, Kala Isik B'Tayra, Uvig Milos Chasadim, Uvig Mispalu Matsibor. The Gemara learns from this Pasik, Ki Ilu Kedaani Bimeinu Umas. The Abish that says, Hashem says, it's as if you redeemed me. From amongst the nations. But the Gemara brings this passage, part of the Nashi. But the Rebbe asks a very interesting question. To say that it's a special day because it's the yard side of the Rebbe, we know that Yoim Kagari, we know a day does something special. Part of the Nashi is obvious. 
But what's special? Why is he stressing that it was Tuesday? What is what is the specialty of that? How does it direct connect to his freedom? And the Rebbe says a phenomenal beer. What does Tuesday, Shlishi, have to do with free, the freedom of the Alter Rebbe? And the Rebbe says like this. By my Sibiratius, the first day it says, Vayar Alikim Kitoyev. Yom Sheni, it does not say Kitoyev. And Rashi brings a Medrash. Why does it not say Kitoyev? Because it, it, that day there was Machlekes. That day there was separation. The Pasik says, we're going to separate the waters from upper waters and the lower waters. Division, separation, that's not good. That's machloikas. Right? You're anti machloikas, right? When there is no machloikas, when there is machloikas, it's not good. So, on Yom Shani, it does not say Kitoy. Yom Shlishi, when we, we figure it out, and Nigmara Malachtoy, what was Nigma Malach Samayim? The Abish just says, Yikavu Hamayim, let the water move to some place and let, let be some dry land. Let's, let's make peace. Let's have, it, let's have the water and, and let, let there be dry land and everything should get a coexist. Oh, now, not only it says Kitoy, it says Kitoy twice. Says the Rebbe like this. Yoim, the first day, it says, It doesn't say Yoim Rishon. The first day, all, the first day of creation, all that there was is You only felt God, godliness. Even though there was a creation, something was created in the first day, but even the creation knew it's a shtick God. It is godliness. You felt elokus. That's what you felt. The second day, when there was a separation between el yimayim el yoinim and mayim tachtoinim, that symbolizes spirituality, which is el yoinim, and tachtoinim, which is gashmis. But there's a separation between the two. I don't know you. You don't know me. That's not good. There's no kitoyv there. The third day, when nigmar amaleches amayim, and the Torah says you kavu amayim l'makim echad, that's when we learn to coexist. We learn to connect ruchnius and gashmius. When ruchnius and gashmius are not opposites, somehow the ruchnius sees the gashmius and uses it to elevate itself. And, and, and of course, the Gashmias doesn't stand as a stumbling block to the Ruchmias, then that's, that's, that's Kitoiv twice. That's Kitoiv twice. That's, that is what the world is all about. Mm -hmm. And the Rebbe says, this is exactly why the Alter Rebbe stressed that <laughs> for his, his, his being free of its right, free, 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 free of, uh, of prison. There was a time. There are two types of people. There are, in the world, there are many ways, of, there are many approaches of how to tackle the world. There is to tackle the world and say, I'm a Yeshiv Oyel. I am very spiritual. Very good. But sometimes you get smacked in the face pretty hard and you don't know how to relate with the Gash, what, what Gashmias is presenting you. And then there's another person to the other extreme who says, I am a Baal Asik. And I'm a Baal Asik. I'm totally engrossed in Gashmias. What kind of life is that? What kind of life is that? What can you do with uh, $100 million? Well, tell me, what can you do? What can you do? What can you do? It's not going to get you into in, in Haba. It's not. A, it's you don't help. feel good. Shleim HaMelech. What would you say? Why feel the pain as much? <laughs> Shleim HaMelech says, I have Kasef. A person who loves money will never be satiated with money. He'll always, <laughs> he'll never have a downtime. He'll never have, he'll never relax. What kind of life is that? What is, what is the perfect life? The perfect life is how, how to join these two together. To join 
Obviously, Gashmir seems to be a stumbling block to Ruchdi. So you can't. And the Alter Rebbe says it's not. You have to find a way that the Ruchnius sees the good of the Gashmias and it helps it to elevate it higher. Elevate the person, the, ad, the Adam that works and, and, and does Avedah Shashem, how he elevates himself. And that's what the number three is. The number three is not only, not only two separate things, it connects all three together as a group. I remember once, this story stood in my head. I remember once, the Rebbe came back once from the oil very, very late. And, okay, he, he washed his hands, and he went to Dabu Mincha. He went to Dabu Mincha, and everybody knew that the Rebbe fasts the day he goes to the oil. So they were trying to find ways to get the day over on Dabu Meir, but it wasn't Meir of time yet. It wasn't Meir of time yet. So, um, so they, the Gabbai made an announcement. It was like 15, 20 minutes in between. So the Gabbai, after Mincha, makes an announcement. He says, Yet get Mamachna Hefsik. Now we'll make a, how do you say Hefsik? A, a break. Yeah, now we're going to make a break. And Mayrev is going to be in, fifth, in the first, you know, Mayrev is in the fifth minute. Only the Rebbe could think about this right away. And the Rebbe says, Why should we make a break? Let's connect the two. And he spoke 15 minutes of Sicha. He, he said a Dvar Tayyar for 15 minutes. And the Rebbe's job was not to break, to separate. The Rebbe's job was to connect, to, to bind things together. There's another crazy, fascinating story. It was a great chassid, maybe Rabbi Vesa have heard, have heard of him, Rabbi Yosef Weinberg, all of our shalom. He, used to, he, he was an elderly chassid. He went around in the earlier years, all around the world, uh, for the Babaji Yeshiva, whatever. And he had a lot of uh, people he knew all around the world. So there was one time in the earlier years, in the middle of the night, he gets a phone call from a very wealthy, prominent family in, uh, I think it's Brazil. And they say... I think it's the Safra family. I'm not a big maven of these things. They're bankers or whatever. And he said, they say they have a very urgent medical uh, problem in their home. And they need him to go to the Rebbe and get a bracha. It was the middle of the night, or two, or two, whatever what time it was. So he said, okay, I'll treat you like I do it. You can't just walk into the Rebbe. So he come, it was, luckily it was the night that the Rebbe was seeing people. He comes there, he goes to 770, he comes to 770. And, and he sees the Rebbe is in his room, but you don't just knock him. And the Rebbe's busy. So he, took the, he wrote the note, the names, and he, he, the best he could do is he put, he put the note in the door, in the closed door, and he figured when the Rebbe opens the door, he'll see the note, and hopefully he'll give the bracha whatever he needs. Next morning, he thought to himself, what did I do? Of course, the note was there. The Rebbe must have opened the door, <clears throat> the note fell on the floor, and the Rebbe had to bend down to pick up the note. I must have caused the Rebbe to bend down. That's a, that's a chutzpah. I'm afraid of the kapeda. The Rebbe might have chas So he writes to the Rebbe, I, I feel so very bad what I did. Help me. So the Rebbe said these couple of words. What do you want from me? Harezeh kol inyani. This is my whole goal in life. My whole goal in life, mission in life, is to pick people up, pick things up. That's what I'm here for. Pick things up, connect things together, not separate. This is what Chassidus does. Chassidus does is there is no Ruchnia somewhere in a mountain, somewhere in Williamsburg, even in Passaic, even in Muncie, even in, 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 in Kathmandu. There's Ruchnius, there's Gashmius, and there's Ruchnius. You know, the Avud Raham says a halachic pshat that I don't know why we don't think about it every single day. This is a bracha that we say every single day, many times a day. I hope you say it. When you go to the bathroom, you say, You say the whole bracha. What's the see of my bracha? Hashem who heals every person and he does wonders. 
What does the doing wonders have to do in that bracha? So the Avud Raham, I think it's the Avud Raham says, Umafli Lasis means that the Avishter created a body. And, you know, the simple shot is, I, I know somebody, one of my students, that actually became from when he became a medical student. Because when he saw how Avishter eye, created eyelashes to protect the eye, fingernail, he says the human body is made in such a way, how can't you become from? How can't you see this Avishter? But there's another shot. Umafli Lasois means there's a wondrous combination here of two opposites. There's a Guf and there's a Neshama. Guf and Neshama, if you ask a person, they don't coexist. This one wants to go to Shul, this one wants to go to Yeshiva, and this one wants to go to wherever, play baseball. They don't, they don't, they don't work together. Says the Abu Raham, that's the Mafli Lasois. The Mafli Lasois says, yes! You could make them coexist. You could make them work together. As the famous Taich of the Baal Shem Tev, work with him. There is good in everything. And this is actually the whole theme of what Hasidus teaches us. Everything is good. There is good in everything. There is good in everyone. And if you don't, if you just give everybody that, every, everybody, everything that opportunity, you'll be able to see it all. I was going to connect it to Gavar and Chavez, but the crowd is too big and they're all antsy, so we're going to wait till maybe a little later. Okay? L'chaim, l'chaim, everybody. Amen.